This that new new uh, This that new swag uh, uh, This that new swag uh, uh, This that new spaz uh, I say uh, New water, new ice, new uh, neck piece Police in the bed, they gotta catch me Only met me one time, she want sex me New life, new bitty, yeah, she sexy Pressure ain't made. I can fly in the mountains like a lake. I could never fall in love, I learned my lesson. Grandmother still a lot, so it's a blessing. If my niggas down bad, I'ma catch them. 15 to 1500, who want pressure? Uh, 15 to 1500, who want pressure? They tell me my nigga on the beat. Get rich and throw my niggas on the beat. Street cred and I'm good on IG. Touchdown, all these niggas hate me. Niggas mad cause that girlfriend's like me. me. All day and I'm Hugo Boss sing. Yes, well known, you can Google my name. Yes, you can. Same click, all that buzz I won't change. Yes, 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 yes. Right. yes. Yes, we back in the building with another podcast, and this is Raw Dope Podcast, and I'm your host, Hand 5000. And I got my brother in the building, Kenny Fatso. I got Lee Genius, aka 19 Leads on the board, Digital Empath. The unguardable, the unstoppable, the unbreakable. Baltimore City, the DMV, number one podcast. We in the building. But listen, man, I'm going to get straight to it. Everybody that know me, I always tell my story. And one of the most stories that I shared with the people is one of the most devastating days in my life is when I looked at Baltimore from my back. And what I mean by that, in 2004, 9-11 at 4.30 in the morning, I was uh, shot five times. It was a... Uh, about seven of us got shot that night. One of us, you know, uh, didn't make it. Six of us survived. So with that being said, uh, a good friend of mine came to me with this idea to to go past go and to go past the thinking. And he said to me, bro, how do you feel about service to humanity? And I said, that's the best work of life. So he introduced me to something called Every Town for Gun Safety. So when we did the research and we went to the uh, page, I'm just thinking it was just another organization that just you know talking and don't preach it but when i went on there i seen victims i seen mothers i seen grandmothers i seen parents i seen everybody on one page so today we got the privilege to 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 meet the person that orchestrated this so i thank you to our platform and on our platform i can't say it to you we got some cardinal rules and they simple and it's the three f but anything you say can and will be used against you on the internet so we just like for you to keep it real so introduce yourself to to our audience yes well first of all thank you for having me here thank, thank you. you for sharing your story my name is angela Farrell zabala and i'm the executive director of moms the man action which is a uh, an arm of every town for gun safety yes ma'am so uh how long you've been doing this look i've been doing social justice work for over 20 years, but I've been at every town for a little over four years, and I stepped into this role as executive director in April of this year. So oh, that's it's beautiful. really important. So, what did you grow up at? I grew up. I was born in Philly, but I grew up mostly in Maryland. So okay. What I part? Was, I so I was in Howard County. I was in the county. I okay. was in Montgomery. My dad was in Baltimore, like Bolton Hill area. I went to Towson. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have friends in Morgan. So this is you know DMV is very closely in Philadelphia yeah, too. In they have cousins. I say cousins. I say DC's out twins in Philadelphia. <laughs> Right. Our cousins That's right. because so it all looked the same. It's all the same. So, yeah, I grew up in this area. I went to school here and everything. And so this has been my home. Um, and me stepping into this role and particularly doing this work around gun violence is because I've always been somebody who's like, we got to do more about this. Mm -hmm. This is a tragedy in this country. But when I see survivors and hearing your story again, so important. When I hear and see survivors that get up every single day and dedicate themselves to this so that not one more person has to face this devastation, I said, I need to be doing more about this. So that's why I'm here today. So I got to ask you one question. Did you, yeah. what is it called, Kenny? Is it a fraternity or sorority? Did you pledge? Uh, I have a long story about that. I, I know. It. I, I, can I just get a little <laughs> briefing mean, of it? You can get a little briefing. So when I Would you want to pledge Delta? Could you give in Delta? So l listen, you know, that's my, my family have Delta and AKA. See, and I know it. They, I know were it. Push, they were pushing me to do like, like they really wanted me to be an AKA, and I started pledging Zeta. 
And when I was at Towson, and what happened was I had to leave um, college the second semester of my junior year to go back and help my mom um, and help, you know, help my family and get a job, which is like the story of many of us in our community. I was like the only one of the first people to go to college in my family. And then I had to come back early to help out because it was just like my parents were putting nickels and dimes together to get me there and I had I'm the oldest of three girls so I didn't get to finish which is like devastating because it's a big thing but listen uh, my a lot of my my friends my people are in and in my family sororities and fraternities and it's very important because they're doing incredible work to make sure um, that they're raising issues that impact black community so for for a young girl that's in college that faced that same challenge um, how would you tell them to get through that? Because that's got to be hard on a young person. I'm guessing you're 19, 20, and to take care of our parents. And that's what we're here for. You know, we want to, God forbid it, but we want to bury our parents and be in the best health because that's why we was created. So with that being said, how could you how could you give some advice for a young girl that's in that position and think, if I don't go to college, I'm going to lose everything? Listen, I would say a couple things. I think education is very important. And at the same time, I would say there are things that have got me to this point that had nothing to do with the, the time I spent in college. Mm -hmm. um, that is about me getting out here, networking, working, just really experiencing life. But I also would say don't give up. You know, things are constantly being thrown in our path, and we are resilient people. And just because today what you planned didn't work out doesn't mean that tomorrow can't be different. And so I just kept my eye on the prize. I knew that I was going to make something of myself, do something, and really wanting to give back to the community. And I found even without having that degree, one day I'm going to get it, y'all. Um, I am still, you know, I'm still doing the work. And I think I, I, my, it's, it's, it's what I've learned and what I'm doing is bigger than where I was back then when I felt like everything was kind of crumbling around me um so just don't give up head up we got this so yeah that's that's good advice a round of applause for that lee but um it's a big story that's trending in baltimore and it's very very troubling to me it's very troubling i guess you know it's very troubling to the uh, uh moms demand action it was a, a cookout which was i have to say this on camera which was a beautiful thing in the community for years mm -hmm. but this year it became tragic with 30 victims and two deceased victims out of that. And the one deceased victim is a female. Her mom has been talking on the news every day in City Hall. And um, just the other day, she had the whole City Hall, like, in tears, you know, when she told her story. So that brings me to this. What is the most enjoyable thing about you doing this every time for gun safety things and mom, mommy's on demand? Mom, mom's demand action. Yeah, well, you know, first and foremost, we hear all the tragedies all the time, and oftentimes, like you just described, these are things that may not make national news. They might hit local news, and you know, oftentimes, mass shootings and other things make national news, and everybody's kind of trying to figure out what do we do, but our community, the truth is, every single day, we're losing people. People yes. are taken from us, and that doesn't even necessarily make a headline. Um, and I, as much as that is tragic, what I would say brings me joy, what gives me hope and why I'm doing this work is because I know the majority of people in this country, period, know that there is a better way. I know that people right in this community and neighborhood know there's a better way. And we can actually do something different. This doesn't have to be an inevitability. We know all the statistics, but we're going to get up and every day figure out new ways to kind of approach this issue. It's law and policy and all that other stuff. But today I spent time with community like i'm looking at my man tone who's yeah doing incredible yeah. work and everybody yeah. around yes tone the flip project just really and you know uncle t like i just yeah. got to be with community and see people that are changing lives one person at a time that's absolutely what we need so that's what gives me joy that what uh gets me up every day to keep doing this work because i know that we're going to get over we're going to get through this is it going to be hard absolutely but we got this. We're going to do this. So for anybody that can ask the question, since you've been with Every Town for Gun Safety, what has Every Town, just sh shed a light on some of the things that Every Town has done and stand behind 100%. Yeah, first of all, we know that in order to make change, we need to, you know, elections matter. People have to vote. And I know sometimes it's like, well, what am I voting for? I vote for somebody, and then my, my community is still the same. Nothing's changing here. But I will tell you this, particularly in Maryland, when we think about the state house, we got a trifecta. We have the first black governor. Um, we have both the state assembly and the Senate that are doing incredible work that's pushing to make sure that they are addressing problems of gun violence. Now, is there more to be done? Absolutely. But I will say that's the first thing, that we are making sure that we are um, we're 
putting people in seats and training them to run for office because that is the only way in many cases that we can make changes to change the game because these folks are playing games then get people that really are passionate about this issue survivors people impacted they're going to do something different i think i talked about running for office we have a whole program called demand the seat and we're now we're launching it with young people to make sure that they know that they have a way that what from school board all the way up to congress local um local office that you can do something so it's like office training to office training to absolutely and also to political run training political training but also not just to run for office but also to run like really good campaigns okay, and have people like win i mean and then all so we're all over the country so we're all 50 states plus dc where i live and so we are getting you know state by state doing things to stop bad bills from going across but also pushing one thing i'm most proud about is we had last summer the first federal legislation in over like in about 30 years um and it really opened up the door for things like um getting resources into community violence interruption groups Mm -hmm. there were millions of dollars that were dedicated to that and um we are seeing the results of that when we think about community violence interrupters they're on the ground literally putting their life and body in between bullets to make sure that this that you know it somebody isn't shot and then feel like they have to pay some payback or retribution has to come they're stopping and wrapping around and giving services to families because it's trauma it's deep trauma in our community so not only we have to figure out laws we got to also figure out the healing piece too so how many moms have you ran across that have lost their children and what's that like so many i mean it's it's so many, so many. I can't even put a number to it. A, a good portion of our volunteers are survivors themselves. What it's like, it's one, it's heart wrenching to hear it. It's not surprising. But when you get to not just hear statistics, right, but it's a person's name. You call the name of the person that was taken and hear the pain of that family and that community. And but their also, story. yeah, and their story. But they get up through that pain and they get up and and know that they want to do something different. They want to do something about it so that not one more person needs to suffer in this way. So it's, it's incredibly, um, it's something that really inspires me to continue to do this, this work. So just, you know, a question, what do you think that it'll take for our communities just between Philadelphia and DC? What do you think that it'll take for our community to just get into the spirit of sticking together and loving one, one another? Yeah, I think a lot of it is happening. We just don't see it. Like, you know, you turn on the news and you hear all the negative things about our community. What's going wrong? Especially when you think about black people. Like, you turn on the news, it's like, this is happening. Healthcare is bad. Crime is bad. What's happening? But today I got to see firsthand mm-hmm. people actually doing the, the work. Like, Tone, again, I'm going to lift him up. He's, he's getting out here and making a different way for people. I think we just have to make sure that we're elevating and lifting up those stories, giving people access, and letting them know that, it does. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be a lawmaker. You don't have to run for office. I love it if you want to, mm-hmm. but all you it takes a little thing. Just recognizing there's an issue, talking to your people about it, like getting involved with a flip project. There's so many ways that you can use your voice for influence, and so I think that's what it's going to take. But also investment from our you know our elected officials so that they're putting money in the places because when we know where there's violence. We also will see their underinvestment in communities. So we can talk about school, we can talk about jobs, we can talk about food deserts. It's a layered intersectional problem. So it has to be looked at in that very holistic way. Now, the expertise I have is really around the gun violence piece, but I also know as a black woman what it means. And, you know, I was born in Philly, um, and I see when we go back and see communities there, you can see where there's disinvestment when people are not investing in communities and that's where violence can grow rampant so we got to do a, something about making sure resources are getting to communities but also understand that the solutions are right in the community so we need to be listening to folks that live there that are experiencing this every single day so if i'm a, if i'm a, if i'm a parent and just say for instance i'm just using this for example and i lost two of my kids and you guys come around and you say we're doing this and we do the community what makes me believe you out of the 30 people that came before you that this is a real thing because that's what like you said earlier will shy people away from actually voting and being a part of because is this the real thing or is just somebody just trying to get an off or somebody trying to accumulate money then once they get the way they get to get they sell us out yeah no i totally understand that i think when you when you encounter 
our volunteers and our community that's in, like we are embedded in the community. First of all, what's so incredible about Moms Man Action, Students Man Action, we're actually living in the communities. We're not swooping in from other places. You know, I, because I'm leading the organization, mm -hmm. I, I travel all around the country, but our people are right here on the ground. So that's number one, I would say. Number two, we're not coming to be Superman. We're coming to listen and hear and meet people where they are. What are the needs that you have right now? How do we start to address that? How do we unlock that? And be honest about what I can bring. Like, I can't solve all the problems, but together we can put our heads together and figure out, ooh, I know somebody here that under that, that does um, counseling services. I know somebody here that does this. And if we can kind of do a patchwork of that, we can wrap around community and let them feel, you know, I think they feel like, like a resource. Exactly, a resources. So you don't direct like, them to where they need to be. Exactly. Out. So you don't feel like you're used and abused. Like oftentimes we hear in communities, people swooping in and kind of taking advantage. That's not what we want to do. We are part of the community. And frankly, if if you are not okay, and this is something my mom always said, if if you're not okay, I'm not okay. That's, we got to uh, start from there. I think the whole community not okay, but just from another, I don't vote, and I I yeah. never voted for that particular reason because you know my my first cousin was a fifth prince St. Carnsman for a long time, and 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 here in Baltimore, and I remember him used to get the family together and used to be nice when it was election time. Grandma and everybody vote, and then when it was time, once he got in office, he never did nothing for his family. So that shot, I'm not gonna say he never did nothing yeah, yeah. for the family, but it was like. The people that was in the mud with you, I never see you really like do nothing. So right. it takes a sense of trust. You know I what I mean? I agree with you. I agree with you. And look, I can't, I would be dishonest if I didn't say there are people that politicians out there that are here just to be politicians. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. And you know, the way I would flip that is say, why don't we get our people in office? Why don't we get our people um, in, in these communities doing this, in, in, the, in the state houses, everywhere across this country, that's when change is going to be made. And it's simple things. Like, you don't have to run for mayor. Like, again, I keep lifting up tone because I'm just so inspired by this work. He's yeah. literally like a, a, a mayor running around the city, yeah. the way he's behaving. Yeah. Like, this is what it is. Like, we just need to invest in our, in our communities and just know that power is held we hold power, but we also know that in the halls of Congress or in state houses or in the, the mayor's mansion, wherever that is, we got to have a voice at the table oftentimes because, my, as my predecessor said, if you're mm -hmm. not, you know, at the table, you're on the menu. So we got to yeah. figure out how we are, um, you know, changing that. And I had the same conversation. I have um, twins that just turned 22 this year. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yes. And their first election, they wrote in, it was 2020. And my daughter was in it. She was ready. She was mad. She was like, women's right. She just had her. My son was like, I don't know what this is going to do for me. And I don't like any of these people anyway. And they don't care about me. Right. And I hear him. I hear him loud and clear. And I said, Let, well, let's figure this out. Because when you kind of break it down, it's not just about voting for that president or that senator. It's like our courts are impacted. And we think about the history of black people in this country. Courts gave us some rights, right? Our ability <laughs> to vote and every other. And now they're pulling that away. So we got to start to think about like, yes, this is like feels unsavory. But how do we change the game? How do we flip it so that our people are in here doing and leading the way that we need and want to be led? Uh, beautiful. So just, you know, to get an understand, because that's something that I stay away from, the politics. Could you just, if if you don't mind, yeah. outside of yourself, is there a couple people that's like, that you ran across that's probably going to run for office between Philadelphia and D.C. that we should be looking up and we, you know, it's kind of support. Do our research on them. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, look, I, I'd love to give you information. Off the top of my head, I can't give a particular people. I will say with our program, Demand the Seat, we have so many volunteers volunteers that are literally start from advocating many of them are survivors and have seen things and said this is enough so they're advocating for good policy and they say wait a minute like I'm going to do more than this and decide to step in and run for office in particular women have a harder time you ask them they say what I don't know the formula you gotta ask them like 10 times before they agree maybe even in black women and black people probably even in more but I, I see volunteers and survivors every day that decide they're going to do something different, which is incredible. So, um, yeah, that, that's what I see, and that's what I want to make sure that we have when we talk about um, bringing people, electing people to office that are going to actually have our, our needs and, and, and the things that our community need, putting that forward. So if you run for office, why should we vote for you? 
If I run for office, <laughs> a, a, a particular office, <laughs> why should we vote for you? Wow. Well, first of all, I'm not set up to run right now. I like doing my organizing. But if I were running for office, which I'm not. What, gonna, what office would you run for if you was to run? I would do something local. I like think councilman? I would do councilman, mayor, something like that. I would start okay. there. I think you just got to build. I don't so why should you be our mayor? Good I think old because Baltimore. why would I be the good mayor of Baltimore? Because good old I, Baltimore. Good old Baltimore. <laughs> the reason I think I would run and I, why I'd be compelling is that I, you know, I first of all I lead from a place of faith. I lead from a pay, place of, um, you know, I don't have all the answers. It's not about me. You're not electing me because I am the the knower of all things, are the greatest. You're electing me because I'm going to hold the interests of my community first and foremost. You're electing me because I know the leading cause of death in this country for kids are firearms, and it's. It's even more, it's 14 times higher for black children. And so we need to do something about it. We need to focus on it. We need to make sure that we're looking at issues in intersectional ways. They're not isolated. People don't live lives in a vacuum. Like today, I'm a survivor of gun violence, and tomorrow I'm a person that's looking to, you know, access reproductive health care. And, our, you know, there's a whole host of things that our communities are thinking about every single day. And I want to make sure that those issues are front and foremost. I'm not going to be bought and sold. None of that matters to me. I want our communities whole because if we are not just surviving but thriving, mm -hmm. then this whole nation can't. It doesn't mm -hmm. work that way. Again, if you're not okay, I'm not okay. Um, I, I think I might vote. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean you you, you kind of like... Now, uh, when was Every Town created? So it will be a decade. It'll be 10 years in 2024. And Every Town is a combination of mayors against illegal guns, which are mayors across the country that got together, was tired of the illegal <coughs> trafficking and things happening with gun violence in their communities. And then Moms Demand Action, which Shannon Watts, my predecessor, started after the Sandy Hook shooting. You remember that was in 2013 mm -hmm. um, that happened. Or 2012? 2012. Sorry, 2012. Um, ten, a decade, I'm thinking 10 years from today, but 10 years, 2012. So that happened in Sandy Hook. Those children um, were taken right before the holidays. And so um, she got on Facebook and a Facebook group started and it grew to this big movement of beautiful. moms across the country. And that came together and formed every town. That is beautiful. Well, I know you got to go and I got so many questions to ask, but just so short notice. But we appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate being a part of that. And we, we love what you guys doing and we stand behind it 100 percent. So just tell the people where they can find you at you know, social media. And if you're looking at this right now, um, text the word student. That's student with a S to 644-33. That's student with a S to 644-33. And this episode is brought to you by Every Town for Gun Safety. Every city, every town, every home. That's Tell right. them where they can find you. That's at. right. So I'm at Pharrell Zabala. Y'all are probably like, how do you spell that? F E R R E L L Z A B A L A. That's different. Yes. That's at Pharrell Zabala. No. It is fancy. Pharrell but is. Pharrell is. Yeah. That's my different producer. for women. I, I've actually known a guy. That's your last Pharrell. name? Yeah. That's I mean, last Pharrell name. Williams, the famous yeah, producer. Yeah, it's F. It's not P H. It's F. Oh, wow. Pharrell, right. Pharrell Zabala. But I will, so you can find me there. But I will say, let me just say this to y'all. You know, you tell, you're not political and everything. You're doing everything you need to be doing. Thank you. You're doing everything you need to be doing Thank to you. get these messages out to community. So do not even underestimate the power that you have to do that. And I'm so grateful to be here with you today. And I'll definitely come back. We can have a longer conversation next time. Yes. Right? This is incredible, and so thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. But just quickly, what we do is we call our platform Raw Dope. It stands for the rawest and dopest interviews on the planet. And basically, we, we come from a city where people that's talented don't have a voice. Yes. And they don't get opportunities. It's hard to get on, you know, radio stations. It's hard to get to the TV station if you're not being charged with murder or you commit a horrific right. crime. So me and Kenny, we just wanted to create a platform to get people a voice, you know what I mean? If you're working hard and we check you out and you consistent with your music, we want to interview you. If you do urban community development, we want to interview you. We interview uh, a lady that lost her son to violence. Our platform is for everybody. We had the honor of interviewing Stokey, you know what I'm saying? We interview everybody tone. When the flip, we just do it for everybody. So we like, we creating a hub for everybody to come and talk. You don't have to be, you can have a million followers or one follower, we want the story. Well, it's incredible. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing, and I support y'all. Hey, listen, man. Hit that notification button. Hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. Leave a comment. Raw Dope Podcast.